Cleaning Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. So excited to hang out with you today. As always, if you are serious about taking your cleaning company to the next level, if you want to get the time and money freedom that probably got you in this business in the first place, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Check out all the blogs, the podcasts, the resources, the video I just made for you, everything you need to learn how to get control back out of your company so you can grow like crazy without losing control, growmycleaningcompany.com. Today, we are chatting with Carl Russo from Empire Maintenance Services. They've been servicing the Westchester, New York, uh, Westchester County, New York area with commercial cleaning services since 1996. If you want to reach out to Carl and his team, you can get a hold of them at www.empiremaintenanceservices.net. Carl, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. Nice, uh, nice to hear. Happy you on the show. Nice to have me on the show. Thank yeah, you. glad to have you on, man. Um, so if you've been in since 1996... Um, Gosh, I think I sold my company around 98, 99. So, and I probably, I think I bought around 96. So we started at the same time, but you've been, uh, you've been in, you've got to have a couple stories. Give us a quick outline, if you wouldn't mind, of just uh, what got you in and, and kind of between here and now, whatever you're willing to share, we're willing to hear. Sure. Well, what happened with me was around in uh, 1993, I read a book called Think and Grow Rich. Light bulb went off in my head and I decided to open up a commercial cleaning contracting company. I had no experience. Opened up the company. The company exploded within one year. I went from, uh, Jesus, I went, I picked up a few little accounts, maybe uh, 10000 a month. I went from 10000 a month to over a million dollars in one year. And that led to the point where I'm at right now. I've been in the business for 22 years. Beautiful. Well, that is exciting. I love guys and gals that have been in uh, for so long. That is super fantastic. What's going on in your world that I can help you with today? Well, I'm real interested in knowing about cold calling. Is it really valid in today's market and how the internet has changed? Maybe you could give us, give me some advice on how to go out. I'm looking to expand. I'm looking to expand in the Boca Raton area right now and re-expand my company in the New York area, tri-state area in general, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. And I'm looking for some advice on is cold calling valid and or what would be the next, you know, take me to the next level. I'd like to get big again. I'd like to go up to maybe run between 50 and 100 man crew again. So I'm looking for advice on cold calling and marketing in general. Beautiful. Um, that is a great question and one that I, I think we, I've talked about with uh, my elite folks and some one on one. We, we talk about that a lot and I don't think we've covered it on the podcast uh, either at all or lately. So let's just jump right in. So first of all, there's going to be two answers. One is does cold calling work and can you build a business? Absolutely. Um, that's the short okay. answer. The Got it. more in-depth answer would be I, it's not something I coach folks to do except for in a pretty specific circumstance. Uh, and I'll kind of give you my thoughts on what it is good for, what in my opinion I wouldn't use it for, and maybe some alternatives. So the short answer is absolutely you can use it. Uh, there, you know, I just don't want to get a bunch of emails and angry, you know, Facebook right. messages like I, I built my company and made a billion dollars in cold calling. Good for you. God bless you. Not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying it's uh, probably not the most elegant or scalable way, or it's not the first, second or third way I choose. That said, the times I do use cold calling, I do recommend cold calling. And when I say cold calling, by the way, I mean door knocking or getting on the telephone and calling people that aren't expecting you. So just to be clear, picking up the phone, calling someone that you don't know, saying, hi, can I come by? Can I give you a bid? Can I talk to you? Anything like that. And or just flat out showing up at their place of business um, saying the same thing. Hi, can I talk to whoever is in charge of, you know, handling the facility managers kind of a conversation. So Thank for... You. In commercial, for zero to 10 clients, I'm not only okay with it, I recommend it. Um, I don't like it as a long-term strategy. I kind of look at it, I've had the same conversation with SEO and paid traffic. Um, SEO is a good long-term strategy where if you invest money today and a month from now and two months from now and three months from now, four or five months from now, if you uh, have a good, if you're doing a good job at it, you should start getting, uh, and there's traffic out there, you should start getting a pretty decent amount of traffic to your website um, on how to, uh, that you want. The problem is you're not going to get anything today, right? The good news is once you've built that, once you built that up, even if you stop making search engine optimization efforts, um, even if you stop working, you're still going to get traffic, right? So it's kind of, you're building equity in your company. And that's the, um, the tact I recommend most of my folks to do is create systems and funnels. And we'll talk about that in a minute that bring clients to you. Um, whether you work or not, right? So SEO, even if you stop doing SEO work, you should still keep getting, um, customers to you. Cold calling to me is more like paid traffic, right? You put in money, you get traffic right now. You stop putting in money, you stop getting traffic. So 
um, for the first part, and usually if people ask me about online strategies, I recommend doing both uh, cold uh, paid traffic and SEO at the beginning. And once the SEO starts, once your systems start taking, taking root and you don't have to do paid traffic anymore to kind of wean off of that. But since it takes a while, we start that way. Same with, with cold calling. I would rather, I'd like you to be working on systems. And again, we'll talk about it in a second that bring the right customers to you already knowing, liking, trusting you and wanting to buy from you. Um, we want to work on systems like that, but those can take a couple months to create the systems, a couple months from the people to, for it to, it to start working. Right. So in yeah, the meantime, go ahead. No, I, I hear you on that. But as far as like marketing itself, what would you recommend as far as pricing on something like that? Or it depends on budget and the size of the company. Well, hold on. We're, we're going to come to that. Let me, let's just kind of keep it in order. So we answer the first question first and then uh, we can, we can move on. So the second okay. piece to that is, yeah. So when you're starting, I'm okay with kind of cold calling, door knocking, as long as you don't get hooked on that where that's the only way you get clients because what happens is when you stop working you stop getting clients so if you want to scale if you um when or in the, the worst part is when it starts working you start getting clients and then you need employees and what tends to happen is most owners drop all of their client attraction efforts because like oh my gosh i'm overwhelmed i can't handle the work i have i don't have enough employoys they drop all that efforts all the motion and momentum and and work that's put in kind of goes away and they go to to do employees and once i've got enough employees like oh crap i've, I've got some employees and I need more work and they, and they just go back and forth. So that's, that's the, the trap I don't want you to get caught into. So from zero to you know five or 10 employees, it's a great way to um, match with automated work. But once you've got your, your baseline built, I would start moving all of your systems to automate to automate it. So the, what was the question you asked? I wasn't clear if you said how much should it cost or I wasn't exactly sure on the follow-up question. Yeah, on the, on the course on the SEO and on, the, on your actual marketing course as far as website, I did have two questions. One, do you think that the name of the company matters? Like to give an example with Empire Maintenance, it's like almost maintenance, not Empire Cleaning. That's one question I have. So let me, answer, let me answer that one first. If I get two at a time, my, my brain is not that smart. Right. So, no, I hear you. I'm not that sure. So first and foremost, I love making the name about them, not about you. So Mike's Coaching Company, not super compelling to anybody in the world. But Grow My Cleaning Company, very compelling. You guys are interested in um, growing your cleaning companies. You know you're in the right spot. So I always want to make the name about my specific niche. So if your niche, whoever you, your perfect prospects would refer to you as janitorial, then I'd have my name have that. If they would call it maintenance, I'd have it that. If it's facilities management, I would have it that. And I would try and have the name of my niche in it. So I don't coach to just do okay. everything for everybody. I'd have something like, um, you know, property manager, facility solutions. Make it about that. Yeah, I have, I have empireoffice.cleaning as my other website. So again, I made that. The, Real quick, the question you asked was about your name, not your website. So you can buy and sell any website exactly. you want, but I'm talking about your name. So the 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 feedback for the name is make it about them and be as specific as possible. Like if I if I Thank ideally you. if I wanted to help you, I would call it Carl Russo gets rich quicker than he ever thought he could dot com, right? But since I don't know that, I have to do <laughs> owners of cleaning companies get rich. Okay, cool. What was the second part of your question or the second question you had? Second part was the SEO. How much money to, to you know to push into that into your actual website and your actual you know marketing as far as Google Word ads and things like that. Perfect. So, and again, I didn't want to get. I was trying to use that as an example, and I think maybe I wandered off into into a rabbit trail. So I don't want to get too deep into SEO. But the general question answer is I. This is probably one of the bigger mistakes people make that they don't know they make. Um, a lot of people know they don't do pricing and they don't want to hire. There's a lot of mistakes they know they make. One of the ones they don't know they make is this one. And so this is a big one. If you're writing stuff down, Cleaning Nation, I this am, is a writer right. down. Perfect. Going. Lucky for you, Carl, we're recording. So we get this back for you. But so many people feel that the least amount of money they can spend on marketing, the better. They will brag to me, I built my entire company just off of cold calling or just off of referrals or just off of whatever. Great, but that's not scalable, right? If you're getting referrals, you can only be talking to so many people at one time. If you're getting, um, or if you're cold calling, you can only be cold calling so many people at one time. So it's not really scalable. Um, and they brag like, oh, my marketing budget's nothing. Like, that's a good thing. Well, let me tell you, uh, mm -hmm. Carl or Cleaning Nation, if I move into your area and I know my numbers better than you and I know, hey, my average client is 40 grand a year and of that there's $20,000 of gross margin, I'm willing to spend $5,000 to acquire that customer. And you're, you're going around town bragging, my marketing budget is nothing. I don't spend anything, but I'm willing to spend $5,000 to acquire a customer and you're willing to spend nothing. 
I will crush you. <laughs> you have no chance yeah, to no, compete I against me. You. I hear you on that one. So the big mistake is people think the less money they spend on marketing, the better they are. The reality is the more money that you can spend on marketing and still be profitable, right? So if I know the lifetime, you know, my, my customer's worth 40000 a year, 20000 that's gross margin. If I spend 25000 on a t acquiring customer, that may not be a good strategy because I'm going to go broke, right? And that's what cell phone companies do, by the way. They'll, you know, they know you're worth twenty four hundred a year. They they might they might spend two grand because they're hoping to keep you for longer than a year. I'm not recommending that, but certainly spending nothing is is no good. A good place to start is, believe it or not, five to ten percent of my budget, my overall dollars, I want to put towards marketing expenses. And I know that sounds scary. But again, the good thing is you're going to be competing with people who are putting zero to 2% of their budget into marketing expenses and you will crush them. So did that, uh, again, I don't want to get too much into SEO on this one, but did that answer your, your question in general? Yeah, it really does. Now I, I see where you're going with the general direction on this whole thing. That's why I've been following your podcast. Beautiful. So to, to close the loop before we hit the lightning round, um, sure. the reason I don't like cold calling is most people don't like it. They're not able to do it consistently right? Because either it works or it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, they get burnt out and quit. And then you have no way to grow. If it does work, you start getting clients, which require employees, which require, which requires your time and attention. So you stop doing it. So it's very hard to be consistent. Um, and it is a it is chasing, not attracting, right? The I way agree. Yeah, this, go that's ahead. one of the things I noticed about your podcast that you stress long term long term go back you know the perspective of the client when when they're going to come around don't expect to get the account immediately you might get it in six months detail orientated send them things on on your company itself what's going on with your company new developments new new applications you're using in your company so i'm, I'm with you on all of that and i appreciate the advice yeah people buy when they want to buy not when you want to sell and the good news is, again, you're, I promise you, Cleaning Nation, your, your competition is ignoring this advice and they're only, they're spending all their time on people they're looking to buy right now, i.e. the AdWords people, right? They Googled best cleaning company in New York or you know something like that. And the problem is everybody goes after that, say it's chum in the water, right? So it's you know one guy poking I his agree. head out and like 20 competitors. I think that's the biggest lesson. I, I think, Mike, I, I think that that's the biggest lesson that I've learned from watching your podcast that you really stress this long-term thing. Don't expect to get the client today, but look to the future. Maybe they might have a problem with previous cleaning company, and then they'll call you if you stay in contact, maintain in contact. It's about the cost, about the customer. It's not about you, Carl Russo. Empire Maintenance is about their needs themselves, and that's the biggest lesson I've learned from watching your podcast. Yeah, I, you know, that's a great summary. I don't know that uh, I could give much better feedback than find uh, – your target market, know them better than anyone else, and find a way to give them a tremendous amount of value before they give you one dollar. If you just do that, you'll find your, I have so many more people that want to uh, work with me and I have time to serve them, not because I'm all that bright, good looking, or charming, but because I just <laughs> give a massive amount of value um, and I'm able to leverage that to lots and lots of people. So when I'm giving, I've got an automated system that makes sure thousands and thousands of people are getting value from work that I've done before every day. Uh, well, it's really easy to get dozens of people uh, call in or want my help on a daily basis. So that's what we want to treat you to do is instead of door knocking, right? I don't call anyone and be like, hey, let me let me coach you, right? Because A, the position would be terrible. And B, uh, well, you know, hey, let me show you how to get clients. Well, how are you getting clients? I'm calling you begging, right? That's, <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, instead, really appreciate it. Yeah, we create systems and then you guys come to me and go, how do you just show me how to do what you do, which I love to do. So, all right, I think that's a good uh, kind of stopping point on exactly cold calling does it work does it not work and what alternatives do we have let's hit the lightning round we'll give carl who's got you know decades of experience an opportunity to share some of his experience that said cleaning nation as we go in the lightning round i want to take a second to invite you to grow my .com and check out some of the free stuff i'm talking about the massive amounts of value that we give to you on a daily basis we've got probably almost a thousand uh if you add up the blogs the videos the podcasts the um webinars Everything that we've done, we've probably got over a thousand pieces of content with hundreds of thousands of uh, owners of cleaning companies download and listen. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. I don't even know if there's anything for sale at all. I think the only thing we offer you right off the bat is a free webinar, which is fantastic. The five shifts you need to transform your cleaning company. So go to growmycleaningcompany.com. I don't think there's anywhere you can put in money anywhere on that site. Maybe there is. I, I doubt it. Um, anyway, go get all sorts of free value. And then when you fall in love, reach out and we'll, uh, we'll tell you how to take the next step. That said, let's hit the lightning round with Carl. Three quick questions, three amazing answers. Carl, question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received, personally or professionally? Stay in contact with your clients. 
Hard to argue with that. If, uh, <laughs> if most business owners just did that, I think they'd, uh, they'd get a lot of value without a lot of extra work. Question number two, what's the biggest mistake you've made? You've been in since 1996, so I'm guessing you made some whoppers of a mistake. Share some big ones so uh, we can all make newer, better mistakes and not make the same mistakes you did. Don't, do not let anyone run your company, and it's very important to be fluent in other languages besides English. And let me tag on to that in, in agree cleaning nation. I have seen so many folks uh, try to, you know, hire a general manager and just walk away. And I've, I've been able to do it to a degree, but just fully walking away and, and trusting your entire company, to someone else uh, more times than not is a recipe for disaster. So I couldn't agree more. All right, Carl, last question. What is your favorite book can be business, non-business, just a great book that you can share with cleaning nation. Think and grow rich. Number one book, read it. Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill commissions them to study 500 of the most famous people. I read the book. Within three years, I was living on the Rockefeller estate, working for the family. Beautiful. Best book in the world. It teaches you. Uh, I think Jim Rome said, and I, I steal it all the time, poor people have big library or big TVs and rich people have big libraries. Readers are absolutely earners. Read, read, read. Thinking Grow Rich is a great place to start. Carl, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your passion, your experience, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I know Cleaning Nation appreciates you. Cleaning Nation, if you want to check out Carl's show notes page, the special webinar I did just for you, everything we offer, it's at growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.